Before the sermon, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Park. He was born in 1930 in Asan of Chuncheong Namdo, and uh, after graduating from an agricultural uh, school in Cheonan, he began to teach. And uh, he entered the the military academy. At the time of the Korean War, in 1950, he went to the front lines as an officer. Uh, after receiving uh, training at the military academy, he served for 16 years. Uh, he served his country. From 1971, he has been serving as special assistant to uh, Reverend Moon, and uh, he became president of the Washington Times as well as the uh, Korea Cultural Foundation. And uh, together with the Little Angels troupe, he has uh, made effort to spread Korean culture to the world. Uh, he was also head of the VOC movement as well as the Seige Ilbo. In 1978, he testified before uh, Senate, or excuse me, the Fraser Committee a subcommittee. There was a hearing and as a Korean he did his best to keep uh, maintain the pride of the Korean peoples. In 1990 uh, in Russia he accompanied True Father to the Kremlin and uh, he met the famous uh, Gorbachev. In 1991, he went accompanied through parents to meet uh, Kim Il-sung. Dr. Park has been uh, serving the, the, his entire life for Korea and the world. He is currently the head of the culture Foundation, International Culture Foundation. Let's welcome Dr. Park to the stage. Our beloved brothers and sisters, hello, I love you. We have a wonderful choir. This is a blessing for us. Today, as I was listening, to the choir, I am grateful to be able to speak before you. I believe that uh, many of you have seen this video, 1978, an amazing incident took place in the the US Congress for Korea it was a political incident at the time uh, subcommittee chairman Donald Fraser led a hearing and this is uh, a record of just the main points 
of that hearing. It's about 24 minutes long. So we'd like to see this, uh, watch this first, and uh, before my sermon. If you could uh, watch this video with me again, thank you. This was an investigation by the uh, by Donald Fraser, the congressman, chairman of the House Subcommittee on International Organizations at that time, and he had decided to launch an investigation into allegations that the government of South Korea had conducted illegal operations against the government of the United States, and the charge was that uh, Dr. Park or our church had been somehow involved with that. And so he investigated and uh, formed a team of investigators and put that together. And this took place in Washington, D.C. And the uh, and the narrator is talking about the beauty of Washington, D.C. and the Lincoln Memorial and the importance of Abraham Lincoln's work. Mm. He's re referring to the Watergate crisis that arose in the uh, early 1970s and in the end cost President Nixon the presidency. And from that seems to have come the idea that uh, Korea was uh, lobbying in some way uh, illegally um, in the United States. They wanted to implicate uh, true parents, uh, Reverend Moon, in this. Uh, father at that time was conducting uh, a huge number of speaking uh, engagements, including the Washington Monument uh, speech in 1976. Uh, he spoke publicly in different cities in America. This was one of the main events. Uh, on the 200th anniversary of the United States, uh, to a crowd of 300,000, If the Unification Church uh, could be targeted, then uh, Donald Fraser thought that uh, this was a way for him to gain, uh, make a name for himself. Uh, Dr. Bohi Park went into that hearing uh, not as somebody being judged, but as a person who is uh, in a position to judge. And he made clear, he says, I have nothing to hide, I have nothing to fear. Uh, 
것으로 아닙니다. 저희는 다만 이 국제관계 소위원회의 조사에 동조와 기 그리고 근본 목적 자체가 정당하지 못하며 공정함과 객관성이 결여되어 있기 때문입니다. 그동안 소위원회의 조사 때문에 전 세계의 수많은 사람들이 피해받고 있음을 생각할 때 본인은 이 조사를 적극 반대하지 아니할 수 없었습니다. 아, Dr. Park stressed that uh, he is loyal to his country and to his leader. Um, I can't hear the Korean, but <coughs> Dr. Park is saying that uh, he's challenging uh, Congressman Fraser um, about the way the investigation is being motivated and conducted, and he's uh, accusing him, actually, of uh, making an investigation that's likely to have a, a bad effect on many innocent people, no, not only in America, but also in other countries. Dr. Park is saying that he's a proud Korean and a proud follower of the Reverend Sun Young Moon and he will Very well, be Japan. Then who would be the fourth Vietnam? 
이 소위원회의 조사는 우리의 공동의 적들에게 이용당할 가능성이 있습니다. 이 조사는 잘못하면 두 나라의 관계를 영원히 불구로 만들지도 모릅니다. 그런데 귀환은 이 양면의 날이 선 칼을 쥐고 있습니다. 미래의 역사는 귀환께서 이 칼을 어떻게 사용했는가를 기록할 것입니다. 위원장, 한국의 속담에 불을 빼려다가 불을 죽인다는 말이 있습니다. 이 격언들은 오늘 이 소위원회의 부당한 조사를 경고하는 데 아주 적절한 격언들입니다. 귀환은 불을 빼려다 불을 죽이는 어리석음을 보험하지 말아야 합니다. 위원장, 위원은 하나님의 이름으로 하나님이 원하시는 한미 두 나라의 운명을 해치지 마십니다. 위원은 역사의 심판을 두려워할 줄 알아야 합니다. 시간이 얼마나 걸립니까? 시간이 중요한 것은 본인도 잘 알고 있습니다. 본인이 준비한 성명, 전문이 23페이지입니다. 최소한 도로 줄여서 15페이지 정도로 하겠습니다. 본인은 시간을 측정하기 위해서 로봇까지 가지고 왔습니다. 시간을 재보니까 19분 45초 걸립니다. 그러므로 최소한 19분은 주셔야겠습니다. 본인은 이 기회를 통해서 본인이 느끼는 감정과 본인의 입장에서 진실을 말하고 싶은 것입니다. 단순히 귀하의 질문에만 대답한다면 본인의 입장에서의 진실이 나타나지 않기 때문입니다. As you may be catching, this is Dr. Park pleading to have longer to plead his case than the court is allowing him. He's asking for, I think, 15 minutes, and the court is allowing him only five. Yes, I do know it can be put into a record. However, you know, but if you are directly speaking here, this statement is not just an opinion. It is not just an opinion. It is 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 an opinion. 이와 같은 감정은 의사록에 기록될 수는 없는 것입니다. 당신은 의사 진행에 대단히 비협조적입니다. 5분 내에 요점만 간추려서 말씀하든지 아니면 곧 지리에 들어가겠습니다. 어느 쪽을 택하시겠습니까? 15분을 주십시오. is once again asking, you know, he's asking for 15. Fraser consents to 15 minutes. Then what the Reverend Moon stands for? 첫째, 권성명 목사는 하나님을 중심한 이념을 주장합니다. 권 목사는 흐름이 공산주의에 반대합니다. 그리고 공산주의는 하나님과 인류의 적이라 비판합니다. 둘째, 문선명 목사는 강한 반동 한국을 지지하고 또한 강한 하나님을 중심한 고의적인 미국을 지지합니다. 그리고 문 목사는 두 points that Reverend Moon Father stands for. One is God and a God-centered ideology, and secondly, for a strong anti-communist Korea and a strong God-centered America. 
한국을 약화시켜서 제2의 월남을 야기시하고 한미 진선을 부전시키려 하고 있습니까? He is indicating that Congressman Fraser may be using the hearings to benefit the enemies of the United States. In that, Father is, of course, standing up against communism at this time. The Polish Korean government. 서로 한국 정부가 정상을 벗어난 방법으로 수많은 에이전트를 활용하여 미 의회 내에서 영향력을 확보. Mr. Park is asking why would the CIA, the Korean CIA, bother trying to win influence over the U.S.? Would it be to subvert America? Would it be to subvert America? But he's saying that, uh, making the point that Korea must stand together with America, not try to subvert America. Not sure if you can hear the English. He's suggesting that the Chairman Fraser is in fact secretly working to undermine Korean-American relations rather than protect them. I'm asking what if you are actually an agent of influence here representing Moscow? Father came to America to awaken this country to the threat of communism, he's saying. He's working to inspire others to work together to build God-centered families and na a nation and a God-centered world. This is a view of Dr. Park's family at the time, during the time he's preparing for the response to the Fraser Committee. He has uh, three sons and three daughters. He's a very good father, when, even though he's such a busy person, he, when he's at home. He's a good father to his children. This is 35 years ago, this is taking place, by the way, 34 years ago. Now, this is footage of the Korean War, June 25, 1950. Dr. Park went to the front line at the very beginning of the Korean War. He was actually a military cadet at the time. He became, in the end, uh, in the early 1960s, a military attaché to Washington, D.C., representing his country, Korea. In the 1960s, Father gave him the mission to run and take care of the little angels. We are very honored to present a special holiday program of the little angels. Yeah. This program is presented mm, little angels performed at the United Nations, and uh, he took them all over the world and uh, still does. He's always teaching the little angels to have a, to understand the heart of patriots. So here they are honoring the tombs of departed patriots. This is the command performance for the Queen of England, also I think in the 1970s.
He was one of the only, at that time, he was one of the first and only uh, Koreans who had actually formally met the Queen of England. He also took the opportunity to teach and preach God's word. He worked as True Parents' special assistant, and in many countries, especially America and Japan, represented our True Father and translated for him, interpreted for him. This is Dr. Park preparing for the next stage of the hearings of the Fraser Committee. He believes in the power of prayer and prays with his family members. So he's gone to many countries as a representative of Korea with the little angels, but now he's facing a different kind of situation where he's also representing his country, but at a very different kind of event. As you can probably hear, he is accusing Congressman Fraser of publishing information that is uh, a book. He's accusing Congressman Fraser of using the hearings to advance his own career and for his own political campaign. He's referring here to Thomas More, who was tried uh, in during the time of King Henry VIII uh, and was convicted on the basis of the perjury of another person. He's comparing Congressman Fraser with the with uh, the person who perjured himself to convict Sir Thomas More. He's making the point that history remembers some of the people in history for the bad things they have done. And so people may resemble, may remember Don Donald Fraser for the bad things he's done through this committee if it remembers him at all. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I feel no evil. 
Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Dr. Park testified that these tears were tears of not only of outrage but also of gratitude that he could be in the position to represent God's viewpoint and to communicate these t words of testimony at this time. And he also was weeping because he was a sen had a sense of victory because he was able to communicate all that he had wanted to say. I am a proud Korean. Even if I die, I will still remain a proud follower of my teacher and a proud Korean. Congressman Fraser lost his seat in Congress not long after this in the September 1978 elections. Uh, thank you very much for watching this. Uh, 34 years ago, this took place in the U.S. Congress. And uh, what I would like to say is that in the, the 250 year history of the U.S. Congress, this was the only time that the the a committee, a subcommittee chairman, was accused in front of his committee. Uh, chairman Fraser had another name, a nickname, which was a Korea Killer. Korea Killer. So he was somebody known to uh, uh, destroy Korea. And in order to do that, he wanted to destroy the Reverend Moon and the Unification Church. So why did he try to destroy Korea? And this is because Korea was a, a totally anti-communist nation. And uh, only the communist party and only the communists would try to take this stand against an anti-communist person. So why is it Reverend Moon? And this is because a uh, father was the only bloc at the time that hindered uh, the Soviet Union's world communization strategy. And so in order to for the Soviet Union to communize the world, they wanted somehow to uh, destroy the Reverend Moon and the Unification Church from the American side. And Chairman Fraser was a, a very influential agent um, under the influence of the Soviet Union. 
However, uh, Chairman Fraser could not uh, simply subpoena the Reverend Moon to Congress. As there is a saying, if you want to kill the general, you should kill his horse first. And so I being in the position of, of father's horse, actually I was born in the year of the horse, but uh, they tried to subpoena Pak Bo He first. And uh, if I didn't respond to this call, then they could uh, arrest me. And so these were the circumstances under which I uh, had to attend the, the um, hearing. And I was ready to put my life on the line. The fate of the Republic of Korea and the fate of the Unification Church were on the line. And so I did not mind to be imprisoned and uh, I was willing to risk my life. I told the chairman, aren't you the leader of evil? And uh, I tried to attack him, prepared to die. However, I did not die. And so this was the, the state of uh, my mind uh, when I accused uh, Mr. Fraser. However, I lived and Mr. Fraser actually lost his life in the sense that he lost in the next elections. If Congressman Fraser had been elected to the Senate, uh, he was actually 54 at that age, and he was even thinking to run for the presidency. And so if this Korea killer had become the president of the United States, what would have happened to Korea? Korea was able to who? Uh, Korea was very relieved, and the people of Korea were relieved. And so this is what this video documents. Another important thing, is that the true parents had uh, all of this in mind, and they sent me to the hearing. However, the defeat of Mr. Fraser was the first victory in a series of events that brought about the destruction, the fall of communism. The title of my talk today, True Parents Who Brought About the End of Communism. Actually, uh, my talk takes two hours and it's been divided into part one and part two. And so today, uh, I am sharing with you part one. And in, uh, on August 19th, Sunday, uh, I wish to share with you the second part. This was an uh, opportunity was granted to me by the international president. Uh, through his consideration, I've been given two opportunities to speak on Sunday. Thank you. And uh, I would like to 
we'll do a reading that's uh, related to this. This is uh, from Revelations of John, chapter 12. There is another uh, enemy before heaven, a red dragon with seven heads. This is the, the passage. Uh, I'm not exact, the translator is not exactly quoting the Bible. The dragon is next to a, a woman giving birth and trying to swallow uh, that woman. And the red dragon symbolizes communism. And the woman who is about to give birth represents the Messiah who is to come. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that it might devour her child the moment he was born. This is Revelation uh, 12, 3 to 4. So this uh, is symbolic of the birth of the Lord. But Satan knew about this in advance and he tried to swallow the, the woman. And the other reading is from uh, Revelation 17, 14. It's speaking of the, the lambs. The Lamb is the, the King of Kings. The Lamb will triumph over them because He is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and with Him will be His called, chosen, and faithful followers. This is, uh, uh, we should be very grateful for this Bible quote. So who brought about the fall of communism? The 20th century, in a word, was a century of uh, struggle against communism. And the leading country, the Soviet Union, uh, rose in 1917, and it was destroyed in 1991 period of 74 years. What kind of ism is communism? What kind of ideology is it? Communism declares that there is no God. It sends a, a challenge to God. So communism challenged God, that there was no such thing as God. The purpose of communism was to communize the world and to chase God off this earth. And so their concrete goal was to communize the entire world. The communism was the, the final evil, or the, the, de the devil, uh, within human history. And the person that God set up as leader of his providence was our true father, the Reverend Sam Myung Woon. The red dragon that you see in the Revelation could only be chased away by the Lord, the coming Lord. And the chosen person was the Messiah. 
and the Lord of the Second Advent. I would like to explain to you how the Reverend Moon brought about the fall of communism and how this prophecy took place. The Father Moon said as follows, the, the fight with Chairman Fraser is only an initial fight. The Soviet Union is trying to communize the world. And the first goal of the Soviet Union is to communize America. If America is communized, then Korea will be destroyed. So in order to make Korea live, we must make America live. This was uh, Father's perspective. In order to make America live, the presidential election of 1980, uh, in which uh, then-President Carter was running again, had to be blocked. President Carter was a left-leaning president. He his platform was to uh, remove the American forces from Korea. And this is how he won his uh, election in 1976. However, he said nothing towards the communist countries who were the greatest violators of human rights. On the other hand, he supported communist countries. And so their first goal was to communize uh, America and then Korea. And so the Reverend Moon said that a candidate, Ronald Reagan, who was against communism, must become the next president. And uh, he made a determination to, to support Reagan. At the time, the premier of the Soviet Union was Brezhnev. And uh, he was somebody who declared that in the next five years, he would communize the entire world. If you look at this map, you can see that the, the communization strategy of the Soviet Union was uh, moving at a rapid pace. Two-thirds of the countries of the world were under the influence of the Soviet Union. And then in 1975, a great shock for America. This was uh, Vietnam. Vietnam was uh, unified under communism. America, the superpower of the world, was defeated by the Viet Congs, the, the People's Liberation Front of South Vietnam. And so America was in shock. And this is how the people of America uh, began to feel uh, the Soviet strategy to, to communize the world. Every morning they would wake up to see another country communized and another country communized. And so Mr. Brezhnev continued to stress President Carter should stay on. He should be the president for the next four years, and then I will make America communist. America had lost confidence in itself how to uh, protect itself 
from the, the world communization strategy of the Soviet Union. And here, Reverend Moon said, the battle with communism is an ideological war. America lost Vietnam because of ideology. And this is because uh, America does not have uh, a philosophy or an ideology that supersedes communism. America is against communism, but just to be anti-communist uh, is not uh, the way to win against communism. I would like to ask you, do you know of any wars in history that have been won, that have been won by defense alone? This is the example of the Korean War. When, at the time of the Korean War, the North Korean forces came as far as the river Nakdonggang, and uh, the, the South fought with their life. However, it was not their, their uh, defense at Nakdonggang that won the war. It was... Actually, it was not their their life risking uh, defense at Nakdonggang. Now, who was the the troop leader at this time? At the the, the hero of the Korean War. took a gun and came before his subject and so the, the soldiers of the the first troop at Nakdonggang he told his soldiers if I start to retreat kill me this was what the leader of the, the first troop said to his men, if I start to retreat uh, with my gun, then kill me. And then, a few days later, uh, General MacArthur uh, began to land in Incheon. This strategy of Incheon was not a defensive one, but it was an offensive one. And this offensive is what turned the war around. It's the same with an ideological war. Father said that the, the war with communism is a war of God or no God. Is it God or is it not God? Does God exist or doesn't he exist? This is the essence of the battle. If God does not exist, then no matter how much we try, we will lose against communism. And this is what Reverend Moon said. And then he cried out, I saw the living God. I s it's not a matter of does God exist or not? Do we believe in him or not? But I have seen God. And so I know for a certainty that God exists. Therefore, communism is a lie. 
We cannot give the world to communism. This is ridiculous. We must attack communism with Godism. This was the Reverend Moon's declaration to attack. He said, the only way to <coughs> win against communism is by uh, the ideology of Godism. This, is, this shows the greatness of Reverend Moon. Reverend Moon is not a person who believes in God, but he is a person who has seen God and who has spoken with God. And communism, which says that God does not exist, can only be fought by the ideology of Godism. And so the fight with communism was a battle between atheism and theism. And theism won. And this is because the, the theory that God exists is the truth. It's because it was the truth. It is the truth. Godism was the only ideological weapon that could bring victory over communism. And this was, in fact, the Third World War. One day, a Reverend Moon gave me a call. When I used to live in America, uh, I visited a Reverend Moon very often. And uh, at the time, I was uh, running the News World newspaper company in New York. And uh, whenever a Reverend Moon called on me, uh, I would get a scolding. And so uh, my heart rang, and uh, I went to see him. And he said, you should go see uh, candidate Ronald Reagan. Because I am a, a head of a newspaper, it is possible, it was possible for me to visit um, a candidate, a presidential candidate. And so before I visited uh, Reagan, Mr. Reagan, I went to see Reverend Moon. What should I talk with him about? And Reverend Moon said clearly, you tell him that God has chosen you as the 40th President of the United States of America. I was encouraged by what Father told me. And the moment that I met with Mr. Reagan, what did I say? I shook hands with him and I said, President Reagan, congratulations on your uh, victory in the elections. And of course, Mr. Reagan was very surprised. And he said, uh, I'm not the president yet. And I said, no, it, this is not an illusion. God has chosen you as the 40th president of America. The Reverend Samyang Moon received a revelation on this. And this is why I am visiting you. And so uh, candidate Reagan was again uh, a very uh, incredulous and he said what a revelation why did God and the Reverend Moon decide that I should be the, the president of America and what are the terms 
what conditions are needed. It seems that uh, Mr. Reagan thought that I was a, a broker, some kind of a political uh, lobbyist or broker. But I spoke to him with tears. Mr. President, there are no conditions. God and the Reverend Moon wish for you to become the president so that you can put an end to the enemy of humankind, communism. This is your mission. And if you have this resolve, then you will definitely be the next president. Reverend Moon is somebody who can read the heavenly fortune. And so the, the support of this one person will bring heavenly fortune. Please consider what your mission is and as you lead your campaign for elections. And at that moment, uh, candidate Reagan smiled and held my hand and asked me, well, why does the Reverend Moon have so much faith in me? However, I understand what you say, what he is saying, and the reason why I should become president. I do need the help of God, and so I wish that the Reverend Moon will pray for me. And this is what he said. This was a time when history was turned around, and uh, the First Lady-to-be, uh, Mrs. Nancy Reagan, uh, also shook my hand. And so this is how I became acquainted with uh, Mr. Reagan, and the time for the election drew near. The day of election was November 4th, 1980, and the day before that, Reverend Moon called me again, and his direction was Bohi. For tomorrow's front page in the Newsworld newspaper, put the following headlines. Reagan, landslide victory. In the News World newspaper, put on the front line, Reagan landslide. As head of a newspaper, I was in shock. What? A landslide victory for Mr. Reagan? There are 1,700 daily newspapers in all of America, and uh, none of those papers said at this point that Reagan was going to win the elections. If Newsworld put out something like this, we would be seen as mad. Perhaps if he does well, Reagan will win. How about this kind of a headline? I asked Father. This is how little faith I had. Reverend Moon was looking years ahead, but I could not even see uh, directly in front of me. It was uh, very embarrassing if I think about it now. And uh, Reverend Moon asked me, Bohi, if the Third World War started today, what kind of newspaper would you make? This was such an abrupt question, and I couldn't answer. Um, the Third World War, that would be the, the last day, the last days of humankind. And I would put up a, a huge headline 
on the newspaper. Then, father shouted at me, Bohi. That's what I'm talking about. This is my third world war. If we lose in the presidential election this time, then the whole world will be communized. Korea will be gone. So think that the Third World War started today and make your last issue of the newspaper. I could not find the words to give any more questions to Father. And so I went back to the uh, my office and uh, I told my employees about this and they all asked if I'd gone mad. Do you want to close down our company? And so I needed uh, some kind of a, an extreme measure and I, I called all of my employees to gather in the hall. They were members and I said, brothers and sisters, aren't we the followers of our true parents? Today, unconditionally, we want to follow the will of uh, Reverend Moon. And tomorrow, let's, this will be our final issue. So let's do a good job. And Nobody said anything. They could not object to this. And so that night, we stayed up all night uh, making this newspaper. It was the night of November 3rd, 1980. And we printed this headline, News World Prediction, Reagan Landslide will win by more than 350 electro electoral votes. So what this means is that the, Dr. Park is explaining the, the meaning of landslide. This is like uh, a, the earth moving, a huge earth moving uh, event. So like a landslide, uh, Reagan will, will gather all of the votes. And we wrote at the top, as given here, News World Prediction. I was satisfied with uh, this issue. At the time, um, Mr. Reagan's campaign headquarters was in Los Angeles, and so I sent by airmail uh, this issue. And the, our uh, head of our uh, political column um, brought this, delivered this paper to Mr. Reagan. Mr. Reagan was close with the, the head of the um, politics section of our newspaper, News World, and so he was having breakfast, but when, we, when he saw this paper, he was so amazed, and he put down his, his um, knife and fork, and he came to the press room with his paper, and he showed this paper to the press. There are thousands of, of uh, press gathered there. It's, a, it's the uh, presidential election. And before them, he showed this issue and said, what does it say here? The, the reporters were all 
amazed. And um, they broadcast this this picture here with Reagan holding our newspaper, saying Reagan landslide throughout America. And then what happened? The people of America were so surprised. They got up in the morning and they said, what, Reagan won? Now, I haven't even voted today. Was the date of vote yesterday? And uh, there was confusion. <laughs> this this word the the words at the top of this uh, news world prediction was not did not show up well in the TV and the 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 media. So they just saw the words Reagan landslide, and that changed history. The people of America um, sometimes are not that serious about voting. And so when they saw this, this uh, they thought that it was a declaration of Reagan's uh, victory. And he won by a landslide 91%. This was a miracle. 91% of the votes. Wasn't this exactly what Father was saying? The news world prediction. So, in this way, uh, Reverend Moon a truly supported the 40th president of uh, the, the United States, Mr. Reagan, to uh, <coughs> get into the White House. This became the second victory. Excuse me, that was the, the first victory that led to the fall of communism. If it weren't for President Reagan, then this fall of the Soviet Union would not have happened. And this was just the first step. And what is what was the second step? The next big block was the left leading media. Especially in the Washington, uh, the, the, the capital Washington, the Washington Post, which has a history of 104 years, was a totally red newspaper, a totally leftist newspaper. The Washington Post uh, played a, a large role in impeaching the uh, conservative President Nixon. And so, of course, the Washington Post uh, was not happy about uh, Mr. Reagan becoming the president. <coughs>
At the time in the capital of America, Washington D.C., there was no、um, conservative newspaper. And the、uh, father called me and said, "Let's make a newspaper. You go to America. Excuse me, to Washington tomorrow with a、uh, 200 people that I've chosen." And by March 1st, you start an anti-communist newspaper. There were only 58 days, and so in that period of time, we were told to start a conservative newspaper in the capital city. We had no office, we had no house there, nothing. We started from scratch. And there were 58 days until March 1st. This was the the first print of the the Washington Times. And、uh, we had to、uh, revise this and rewrite this many times. And 1982, May 17th. This is the first issue. You see,、uh, Father's signature here. And to the right, it says Bo He, Pop, my name. This is my treasure. So in 1982. May 17th. Excuse me. Perhaps it's 1980, because it was、uh, three months after、uh, President Reagan took office. The Washington Times has. Uh, brought so much result. There are a thousand seven hundred dailies. And of course, you have the the New York Times and the Washington, the Wall Street Journal. <coughs> But it became chosen as the top three at one point, together with these two major dailies. However, we were an anti-communist newspaper, and、uh, Mr. Reagan read our newspaper every morning. Newspapers would come in to the White House, and.、Uh, Most presidents,、uh, of course, read the paper、uh, over their breakfast. And、uh, and if、uh, Mrs.、Uh, the first lady was reading the Washington Post. Mr. Reagan would say, would complain, and he would say, you know, why is the coffee、uh, not so good today, or why is this bread burned, or something like this. But、uh, if if、uh, she reads the Washington Times, then、um, Mr. Reagan would be happy, and so. Uh, Mrs. Nancy Reagan arranged it so that、uh, only the the Washington Times would be delivered to the president、uh, for his breakfast. And、uh, Mr. Reagan uh, uh, even. 
uh, went so far as to to say at one point that the the content of the the Washington Times is um, exactly along my line. President Reagan had a special assistant and uh, was known as Park Bo Hee. The Washington Times was a newspaper to inform the people and it, it spoke about how to uh, battle against communism because uh, this is what Father uh, was teaching. At 4.30 in the morning, the papers are delivered and uh, when they come off the press, they are uh, hot. And so this 500 copies of this uh, the newspaper that's just hot off the press, uh, we couldn't wait to deliver this newspaper because we had heard how much uh, Mr. Reagan likes liked the Washington Times. And uh, all of the employees of the White House uh, would read the Washington Times, and this is why 500 copies were delivered. And also another car would deliver a set of newspapers to the White House. This came from the Soviet Embassy. Now, the, the Kremlin heard that Mr. Reagan reads the Washington Times. <coughs> And so the Kremlin had given orders to translate the content of the Washington Times into Russian and uh, send it to the Soviet embassy. So, so we were also sending for a certain period of time uh, the Washington Times to the, the, the Soviet embassy as well. There are many other things, but... Um, I have no time today to share everything with you. The 25th anniversary of the Washington Times was celebrated in 2007. At the time, the former President Bush came to give remarks. <coughs> After President Reagan, uh, President Bush came into office, and as uh, giving his remarks, he said, the Washington Times has the greatest merit in bringing the Cold War to an end. Mr. Bush said that the Washington Times had the greatest merit in bringing the Cold War to an end. And he spoke about Reverend Moon saying that this person is not even an American, but he invested so much in this newspaper. And in the capital city, there, there was no conservative paper, but the Reverend Moon is a hero who brought the conservative voice into Washington. And then he uh, the father took this stage. At this time, the 2,500 top leaders of Washington were gathered here and they all rose and greeted Reverend Moon. And father gave the keynote speech 
at this time. This is the third picture, the third step in the victory that led to the, the fall of communism. So this was the victory of the third step. Brothers and sisters, if the Washington Times had not been created in Washington, D.C., then a Mr. Reagan uh, would not have had a foundation of ideology. And what supported Mr. Reagan was the Reverend Moon and the Washington Times. And so today I close at this point. This is a, a photo taken with Mr. Reagan. I was invited to the White House. Actually, uh, Reverend Moon should have been invited first, but uh, I was uh, invited uh, in advance, and he presented me later with his photograph, and so I brought it with me today. Next Sunday, on the 19th, the, I, will, uh, I would like to share with you the second part of my talk, and I believe that it will be inspiring. I hope that you can all come. Anybody who is attending for the first time, please rise. Anyone else? For those people uh, with gratitude, I would like to present this uh, booklet called the, the Peace World Forum. Bible form. This you cannot buy anywhere else. I'm sorry that we cannot give this to uh, everyone, but just to the those who have come for the first time to Chumbokung. If you are a Korean, I can guarantee you that you will be moved by this content. And so please read through it, and uh, please bring your friends. And let us pray. Our beloved Heavenly Father and our true parents, today our brothers and sisters gathered here were able to witness your amazing accomplishment. There are about 200 days until Foundation Day. And thank you for giving us this chance to 
uh, make a new resolve about what we should do uh, before Foundation Day. By investing everything we have, this is how we should have lived in the past. But uh, at times we were not able to invest everything. And so from now until the Foundation Day, which is God's desire and which is our true parents' desire, help us to become sons and daughters that you wish for. And I offer all these things. In the name of Bohi Pak, Central Blessed Family, Aju. Let's offer Dr. Pak another round of applause for his precious talk. Brothers and sisters, this is the Chonbokung news for this week. True parents have said that all the blessed families should inherit heaven's blessing and has given a special 200 day period of special song conditions and devotions that we should do, uh, which they are of course doing themselves. In our church or at home we should do uh, with our families hundokhe every morning and also offer 120 bows and inherit the mission of new, new tribal messiahship. Dr. Chunho Sok, our church president in Korea, was at the church in Yongin, just south of Seoul, and he spoke to uh, a congregation of about 90 people at the Sunday service. He talked about the beginning of, about Foundation Day as the beginning of the substantial Chonil Kuk, the beginning of God's kingdom in substance. This was the message that he gave, that Foundation Day is this day of that beginning. Um, last month, there was a special camp for parents and children 
uh, where parents are trying to find uh, spouses for their second generation children. And the parents uh, were giving testimony about how they wish they could have done better for their children and um, there are many exchanges that help them to build relationships and help from the staff and then the following week uh, the second generation uh, 32 people, 16 men and 16 women uh, had a special meeting to meet each other and to try to find spouses and they did activities such as rafting in order to get to know each other better hmm. the next one of these meetings is uh, next month, the 1st of September and the 9th of September uh, Reverend Yu Hyo Won, the first church president uh, died 42 years ago and this was the ceremony to remember him and his 42nd anniversary held at the Korean church headquarters on the 8th floor Reverend Yu wrote this is his wife, Sagil Cha, receiving flowers on his behalf and uh, Reverend Yu had written the explanation of the divine principle under Father's guidance and Mrs. Sa has carried on the work to, uh, to disseminate the principal teaching Uh, this is a special yebe for Songhwa students, for third year high school students who are looking ahead the 100 days or so that remain between now and the university entrance exam. These students um, are making it their determination to focus on their studies until the end while not forgetting the goals that God and True Parents are asking of us all. And they made a, a special effort was made and encouragement was offered by the staff and there was a special prayer to bless the study efforts. So we need to encourage our third year high school students to do their best and to be able to succeed. This was a summer workshop for Songha students that took place last week. Uh, it was centered upon the uh, preparation for receiving the blessing. Some 100 students, or almost 100 students took part and 17 Songha student teachers Two days is just a short time, but they learned uh, during that time about committing themselves to public activities, uh, about maintaining their faith and preserving their sexual purity in preparation for the future and resolving to, pre to prepare well for the blessing. They uh, concluded the workshop with that resolution. Truth is something that never changes. So in this evil world, how can we discern and separate good from evil and find what is true? We must put aside ourselves and humble ourselves to a lower position. In the Bible also, it says that those who exalt themselves will be humbled. So it's important to remember the essence of a human being is our spirit, our spiritual essence. Our spiritual essence. May you have a wonderful week filled with the love of God and true parents. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the news. on to send a round of applause to our true parents who have worked to release Heavenly Father from his suffering and bring him liberation. And also let us offer one more round of appla applause for Dr. Park Bo Hee for his amazing testimony. Please uh, refer to your bulletin, your service sheet that you were given when you entered and I will read some or explain some of the main announcements. All blessed couples, all families around the world are being asked to participate in this uh, 200 days of special devotions and conditions along with true parents and these are the conditions that are being asked that we do hundake together with our families every morning and uh, do 120 bows and also 
Live a life that is focused towards results. This coming Saturday, next weekend, uh, there is a Chulpaljol Holy Day ceremony here at Chombokung. There won't be one up at the palace this time. Chulpaljol is the day of declaration of God's eternal blessing, the beginning of tribal messiahship. The, uh, sorry, that's the 7 1 Chililjol and Chilpaljol, the declaration day of uh, the realm of the Sabbath for the parents of heaven and earth. These two holy days are being. Uh, combined and celebrated here at Chombokung next Saturday morning. I think it's at 5 a.m. Also, there will be a special prayer service to restore, to bring UCI back under True Parents' Dominion. A 40 day condition will start from the 11th, or started from the 11th of August, and there will be a special prayer at 5 o'clock in the morning. Yes, in the small chapel that's on this floor. Please attend. Now, each region that's connected with Chombokung, east, west, south, north and south, are beginning their own activities, centering on those regions. So, east region, on uh, I think Tuesday morning at 10.30, East region is at the express bus, term bus terminal, west region is at Hongjie Station, south region is at Yoido Park, and north region is in Wangshimni Station Plaza on exit 5 um, in the afternoon, uh, east, west and south at 10.30 in the morning. Please see your Moxanim and uh, find out more details. But this is a witnessing, this is witnessing. Please, uh, special time of witnessing for 40 days that's going on right now from the 20th of July to the 28th of August and this is in connection with that and it's all aimed towards bringing victory for Foundation Day uh, if you need to use the shuttle bus to take you uh, around if you're not so young um, there are shuttle buses now operating for our members who are uh, not so mobile uh, today after the service there will be a meeting for South Region members in the second floor lecture hall. Uh, he's mentioning that there was a demonstration outside this morning. And that sometimes there are incidents where members stop to talk with uh, the people who are demonstrating and that sometimes leads to some kind of dispute or something anyway. So it seems like what they would like to ask Let's maintain a standard of faith in front of our true parents and He's asking us not to engage in talking or uh, any other give and take with them uh, but maintain a dignified faith uh, even though they may occasionally provoke us or make us feel like saying something. Anyone who's come for the first time today, we'd like to give you a lunch ticket so you can have lunch downstairs. If you come and see me in the front. Next week, Dr. Park will speak again and give the second half of his talk. Brothers and sisters, please face each other. Let's offer thanks to our God and true parents and let us live a victorious life together. We can say, and I will pray for this, we can say to each other. And with this, we will conclude this uh, first service for this Sunday. 
Thank you very much, everyone.